Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name's Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. Uh, Yeah, it's one of those days. It's one of those days I just can't figure out what to say on the podcast, so I just keep recording it over and over. And we'll see if... uh, This has got to be the one because I'm running out of time here, folks. (laughs) The day is waning. I got lots to do. We just actually came out of a meeting today. We had a meeting with uh, Tim Murphy of 4 Run 3 Racing. They're the ones that did our 5K last year as part of the Ordinary Marathon. And uh, I got to tell you, it's really cool, really nice to talk to a guy who's in the same business, who kind of like gets the whole whole sense of the business and how things work. I mean, he does this for a living. He's, you know, he's, he's on it. He's on it. So it's really cool to kind of, you know, get a good vibe um, from someone that you work with and sort of like, your, you know, that has the same energy, positiveness. There's no, you know, again, it's like, it's, it's sort of like the same thing with racing. Like there's no competition between me and him. It's all, let's just try to make this better and, and just get a good, just get good vibes and, and spread good vibes when it comes to running and, and just really teamwork and making things better for everybody. Uh, we had a great chat. We are really, we're just, we're trying to select a date now for the Ordinary Marathoner 5K portion. It's still going to be a 10-day virtual race. And uh, I got to tell you, we're super excited. We're super, he's got a lot of developments with his company and we got a lot going on here. So I don't know, man, this Ordinary Marathon this year, next year, whatever, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I just, I sense that it's growing and growing and everything's, everything's wonderful. I want to address one topic today from T-Sean Laws. Uh, T-Sean was talking about my t-shirt and why I wear the same one every day now. The answer is I got like five of these. Not like five. I have five. Um, I actually keep this one right behind. And when I do the podcast, I just take one shirt off and I put the shirt on. It's kind of like the wardrobe now, right? It's got the hat. I got the shirt. Uh, I only got one hat though. You know what I like about hats? (laughs) <laughs> this is already going off the rails. You see? <laughs> I got so much to talk about. I'm going to talk about hats. Um, but you know what I like about hats is that the more you wear them, and now some people say, oh, they get dirty. And it's true at a certain point a hat gets dirty. But at a certain point, like somewhere, you know, around, I don't know, probably a dozen wears, it starts to develop. I call it, I call it character. It's not dirty. It's just character, right? It's no longer perfectly white. It's no, you know, it gets a little dirty on the edges you know maybe a little frayed on the end of the brim you know it definitely on the inside you get that little brown spot i never wash a hat never wash a hat you just i mean you just you're you're gonna ruin the brim this curve right here that's money that's the money like you know you see some of these pictures nowadays like they wear the flat brim (sighs) you know that's not that's not a style guys that's not you look stupid i'm just gonna i mean maybe i'm old school you look stupid flat brim these these already come with like a nice little rounded edge uh, so the more you wear the hat the more character it gets up to a point and then it gets gross All right so it goes from it goes brand new spotless character character more character more character awesome hat oh the best hat ever gross you got to put it away throw it away put that one to bed bury it in the backyard that's that's the lifetime of a hat it's just like anybody else it's just like anybody else um but yeah, I do have multiple shirts, the shirts, and I do, I kind of really don't wear them out. I, well, I wear them out a little bit, but, uh, you know, I got to be seen as, as the coach, Team Ordinary, right? A little update with the team. We're going to get to our races for the weekend soon. Uh, we're about 50 to 55 people, somewhere around there. I don't have an active count, um, but we've gotten a lot of new people over the last couple of weeks. Well, it's only been open for a couple of weeks. Uh, the production and shipping department have been working overdrive. We ordered new shirts. We ordered more shirts. We had run out of some of the sizes. So we ordered some more. We got some extra smalls. Some people were asking about extra smalls. I, I think these shirts, by the way, are running a little bit large. Uh, some people have been saying they're a little bit big. They, you know, I got a large, it's a little big. Uh, maybe I'll take a medium instead. Um, so we've dealt with that. So if you're on that cusp of, you don't know if you're a large or an extra large, get the large, go with the low. I think you're going to be, you're going to be happy with that. Just go go on the low end. Stay on the low end, uh, and you're going to be fine. They're just running a little bit big. Um, but yeah, so we ordered some more. We got the extra smalls. If anyone wants them, just, just contact me, and, I'll, and we'll hook that up. Um, and I got to tell you, you know, you guys have been registering, and I get an email every time someone registers. And most of the times, in the first, I don't know, 40 or so people were people that I know, of course. And I got to tell you, it's awesome. 
anyone, any order is great, but it's awesome to see people you know, because it's like, it kind of validates what you've been doing. You know, so all the work we've been doing here the last three years, the podcast, the the Facebook group, the racing, the training, uh, hey, becoming a coach, all that stuff. It's all, you know, the charity, this raising money for charity. It's all good. And we're, we've got great support. Um, I know I, I, there's still a lot of people out there that have said they want to join that just haven't gotten around to it too. So when I see a name of someone that I know who's been part of the group, look, I know, I know how this works. All right. And I, I am not a good salesperson. I am not, but I definitely don't try to be a salesperson. I don't try to kind of like, I, I'm not out for your money. I just, I want you to enjoy this experience. And by you purchasing this and being involved with the team and getting the gear package and then taking pictures and posting them like you guys have been, it's just, it's really, it's really cool. It's like validation for me that this is a good thing. And I can't, I can't even put into words how awesome in my brain, like how is thinking how great this could be in the long run. And, uh, and you guys are doing awesome. And thank you for the support. Now, the other kind of people that when they register, it's a different kind of awesome is with people that I, I don't know who they are. And I'm like, I see, I open a, an email and it's like, oh, this person just joined and I, I'm not familiar with this name. And that's a different kind of awesome. Cause that means that you guys are out there spreading the word, um, or it means that, you know, maybe people are that are lurkers on the page that don't really, you know, that they've been on the page, but they don't really contribute as much, which is cool. And I totally get that. I'm a lurker on a lot of pages, uh, but they're, they're getting involved and that's awesome. It's like a different kind of awesome for us. So, and that's why, you know, I mean, cause let's be honest, I can't, I can't know everybody. I try my best, but I don't know everybody. And for this thing to expand, it's got to expand to people who I don't know. So for, for number one, to get the validation that the things we've been doing is productive and you guys are enjoying it and, you know, it's all supportive and encouraging and all that good stuff, that's important. But in order to grow this, obviously, it's going to have to reach out to people who I don't know and people who aren't in the group. And to see those names start to trickle in, people who I don't know, I look I look forward to meeting you and reading your bios and, and your profile pages and doing all that great stuff uh, and seeing and watching your race and cheering you on, especially if you're working hard and training hard. It's just a different kind of awesome to see that. And it just really starts making me to make me feel like, hey, this is going places. We got something special working here. It's just in the in the beginning. We're just in the, in the first few, you know, the first step of something that's going to be great is, uh, is what I'm thinking is what I'm thinking. So let's go on to this week's races. Uh, we got a busy week, you know, it's funny. I'm like, I'm thinking, all right, you know, the big races, what are the big races? I'm thinking Marine Corps next week and, uh, New York city marathon. We just had Chicago. This is kind of like an in-between week. There's not going to be many people. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I do have to say that I think you guys, I think you guys register for name for races that have names that are, are difficult to pronounce just to screw with me for the podcast. That's what I think. Um, the first, some of these aren't, but some of them are, we'll get to those. Uh, the Ironclad Half Mar- Marathon, Ray Magana is out there. It's in North Carolina. He's out there with his uh, Team Ordinary luggage tag. That's pretty cool. Uh, I might have to add that to the gear package, the luggage tag. I like it, Ray. Uh, good luck to you out there. The Urban Bourbon Half Marathon, that's easy to pronounce. Of course, that would be nowhere else but Louisville, Kentucky. Carla McCollum out there running that one. The Mankato Marathon, I think it's Mankato. Could be Mankato. It's in Minnesota. Travis Heiderbrink is running that one. I know he's been training. He's uh, he's ready to go. Ironman North Carolina, the 70.3 in Wilmington, North Carolina. Jacob Polzin, uh, relatively new to the group. I know he's been training hard. He's out there ready to give that one a go, the 70.3 in uh, North Carolina. Ironman out there. The Pumpkin Holler 100 50K. It says 100, H-U-N-N-E-R-D, which makes me think that there's probably a 100K option or a 100 mile option. Uh, Belvi is running the 50K. Only 50K, Bell? What, what's that? It's in Telequa. See what I mean? Pronunciation. Telequa, Oklahoma. Bell is out there running that one, doing the 50K. Good luck, Bell. Uh, man, you're crushing it. You're crushing it. Uh, then we go to move on to Sunday. Oh, I forgot one. How could I forget this one? I was, cause I was saving for, for the, I was saving it for last and it was right in the middle. Uh, the ghost train trail race in Brookline, New Hampshire. Thank you for a race. That's easy to pronounce. Jen Bergstrom. Jen, Jen's going to be running that one. Uh, I believe what it is about a 15 mile loop and you just run it as many times as you can. And she said she's, she's planning on 30 or 45 miles, depending on how many, obviously how many times she's going to get around. She's there with uh, Charlene Shaver and Matt Hoadley. Matt is running a hundred miles. 
100 miles or 100k? I think 100 miles, she said. And Jen's going to be uh, Jen's going to be pacing him for one of those loops. So best to you, best of luck to you guys out there tomorrow. It's probably tomorrow and Sunday, those big races. Uh, moving on to Sunday, speaking of the devil, um, Belle Vi, who ran 50, who supposedly runs 50k on Saturday, is going to run a hot chocolate 5k in Oklahoma City. On Sunday, the Eastwood Five Miler in Syracuse, New York, Maura Donovan, my friend from uh, Ironman Lake Placid, she's actually running a, uh, a turkey trot out in my neighborhood. We're going to be running that with her on Thanksgiving, but uh, she's got the Five Miler in Syracuse this weekend. And here's a good one from our uh, one of our resident Canadians <clears throat> from Canada. <laughs> I like saying that. Um, Christian Lee, he's going to be out there. And this is what I'm talking about. You got to, can you not do a race that's in French? Can you not? Are you just messing with me? So he knows I'm going to have to pronounce it on the podcast. The Marathon Petit Train du Nord. How'd I do? I don't have that like French flair. I just can't do it. Uh, but I'm going to do the translation for you guys. Uh, Petit Train du Nord. That is the, the little train of the North Marathon. Or is it the little marathon train of the north? Is it a... I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to go with uh, the little tra- the little train of the north marathon. Uh, but that's in French. <laughs> Good luck, Christian. Hope, hopefully you, uh, you crush it out there. The Mount Desert Island Marathon in Bar Harbor, Maine <clears throat> is this weekend. I got to tell you, I've, I've heard nothing but awesome things about this race. Uh, Brandy Parker is running this race. Um, I'm actually surprised that we only have one person running it in the group because I, I hear really great things about it. Brandy, I, I'd love to hear how your race goes. I think that the race is mostly on the ocean front and that it's just awesome view. Uh, you know, it's Maine in, in late October, which is typically nice and cool weather. Hopefully you get a good day and, uh, and you crush it out there. Can't wait to hear about that race, uh, Brandy, see how you do. So as you can see, a really busy week for the team this weekend. Again, if you want to join the team, go to teamordinary.com. Anyone can join. You don't have to be in the Facebook group. You don't have to follow me. You don't even have to listen to the podcast. Um, but I, you know, you join join the team. You can submit your profile for the website. You get the gear package, all the good stuff, the hat, the shirt, the bag, and uh, and you get your name on. You know, you get to submit all your races to our race calendar, and we'll mention you on the podcast, and we'll follow you through your races. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. So a little blast from the past this this week. I think it was yesterday. A little announcement on the on the message board. Our friend Glenn Eisenstein whose daughter, Samantha, started the SAM Fund, which we raise a lot of money for, put a lot of our attention to. Um, now, he ran his first marathon in Chicago and he turned 70 years old. And then shortly after, he ran New York City Marathon the following year, second marathon. Kind of took a little break this year. He's 72 years old now and he's thinking, <sighs> he's thinking he's coming back in the game. So what does it take for a guy who's 72 years old, who's already just finished two marathons, to then take a year off and decide he's going to come back? Well, <clears throat> the Sam Fund had a uh, potentially has a bib for Boston, the Boston Marathon, and Glenn is thinking about doing it. Now, Glenn uh, probably wouldn't want me announcing this on the podcast because if his significant other, Abby, if she hears that he's going to train for another marathon, she might uh, she might divorce him. Yeah, that's uh, that's sometimes the ramifications running races here, folks. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, I think he would. Get, <laughs> he might get a little aggravation. Let's just put it that way. Let's just put it that way. Um, but Glenn, <clears throat> you know, if, if he can get in the race, I'm sure, I think he's going to give it a go, which means he's got to do winter training, winter training in New York. Uh, I think he's more of an outdoor guy than an indoor guy. So hopefully he gets out as much as possible, uh, bundle up and get him out there running. We're going to have to work hard with him, guys. Everyone's going to have to encourage Glenn. We can't let him, we can't let him kind of, uh, you know, Peter out on his training here. I don't want to be sitting there on Heartbreak Hill uh, as it starts getting dark, trying to whip Glenn up Heartbreak Hill uh, and get to the finish line, um, you know, before midnight. <laughs> Come on, Glenn, we're waiting. But uh, I know if he, you know, if he takes the bib and he goes for it, he's going to be ready. We're going to get him out there. And that's, that will be a fun, you know, we're already going out there to watch Carla McCollum and Connie run the race. And, uh, there's going to be a significant, I think there's going to be a significant team ordinary support presence at that race. So Glenn, best of luck to you. I, I'm so excited to have you back in the group and, and, and active in the group. If you're, if you start training again, we're all going to be watching this one. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a lot of fun. You know, um, as I talk about Team Ordinary in the group, I, I do have to apologize that this week we didn't do uh, an interview. I haven't done an interview probably like a week and a half, two weeks. There's a reason for that. I'll talk about that in a second. 
But I was able to get a video out yesterday. Uh, I put together this video for the group for Team Ordinary, where I just kind of, it's really just an overly dramatic sort of cinematic way to introduce the team and everyone who's joined already. And, you know, if you submitted a picture, I put it up there. And if you didn't submit a picture, I look, I tried to reach out to everybody um, who's given me a profile, who's put one up on the page or whatnot, and just try to get a picture. Because there's, I, I don't have the, I don't have, my problem is this. My problem is I don't have the chops to kind of the computer chops, know how the website construction know how. Uh, this website could be a lot better. I admit that it's all manual right now. So I don't. I didn't have a spot where you could upload a picture for your profile. Instead, after people submit their profile, I ask them to send me a picture, and a lot of you guys have done that. Now I use that picture in the video. If you sent me one, if you didn't. Uh, Number one, I did try to reach out to you. Number two, I, I, I tried. If I, if I missed you for whatever reason, I apologize. If I, you know, I do have your name on there, but if I don't have a picture and it's my fault, I do apologize. I just kind of rushed this together. It was a busy week for us, but the video is really cool. We got a lot of good feedback from it. It's overly dramatic. It's got some really crazy music to it. The music actually reminds me, um, and I, I'm probably dating myself here, but if you remember the movie Gladiator, the very end of Gladiator, there's a song and it's it's like it's sort of this like uh, cinematic chanting in Italian kind of like female voice. It's really cool. Uh, for some reason, that song always stuck with me. And it, this song just reminds me of that. It's sort of dramatic and cool. Uh, it's not in Italian. We're just getting all the languages today, right? We already talked about French. And this one, I'm assuming it was Italian. I figure it's Gladiator, Gladiator, Coliseum, Coliseum, Rome, Rome. Italy, Italy, Italian. See how I made the connection? See how I did that? Um, so yeah, so we had a little French before, now a little Italian. Uh, I don't think that the video was in Italian. It's just sort of chanting, but very, very dramatic. <laughs> very dramatic. And I thought it came out really good. So check it out. It's on our YouTube channel. Guys, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Um, we're up to like 123 subscribers. We're, re- I mean... It's growing. It's really cool. It's really fun. We're going to be doing more of these videos too. Um, I'm collecting pictures from everyone posting their stuff, their pictures with the ordinary uh, team, ordinary gear with your blue shirts, your hats, all that good stuff. People are putting their hats on your dogs. Uh, that's awesome. I'm a big pet fan. So love it. Love it. Uh, all those pictures are great. We're going to be putting together a lot more videos going forward. So if you didn't get into this one, join the team, submit your pictures, do all that good stuff. Uh, we're going to be making lots and lots of videos over the next few months. And you you know, if you're part of the team, you're going to be part of it. If you're not, you'll be left out in the cold. You don't want to miss out, right? Who wants to miss out? This is fun. Um, but one of the reasons why we didn't have an interview back to that, uh, this weekend, we, we kind of had a little bit of setback. Now, those of you who've been listening to the podcast, you know that, uh, I've been coaching Stephanie and Aura the last few months, trying to get them ready for the marathon. And they were crushing training all the way through. And two weeks ago, they did their long run. Uh, It was 16 plus miles. They were going to do another long run last weekend. Stephanie got the kidney stones or didn't want to do the long run without Stephanie. Uh, It's fallen off the rails here, folks, pretty fast. And now we're in tapering week. The the marathon is next weekend. And it's too late to finish their long run. So they're in tapering now. We're trying to approach the race, come up with a a race approach that will effectively get them to where they need to be. Now, the problem with Marine Corps Marathon is their cutoffs. Uh, The last one being at mile 22, you have to reach mile 22 at a 14 minute pace per mile. They can still do this. I know they can. It may not be easy. It may be painful. Uh, It's going to include run walk intervals, planned run walk intervals. And I know that they can do it, but we're going to see. Now, we talked about this Monday, but Stephanie had kidney stones on Sunday. She was in the ER. We went there. She was in significant pain. And in reality, when you go to the ER, so we go to this ER in the city of Springfield, and it's a city hospital. And the city hospitals, I feel like I feel like the problem is that so many people go to the city hospitals uh, for insurance purposes or whatnot if they have a cold. If they have, you know what I mean? It's just uh, they have nowhere else to go, so they go there. And they have to deal with a lot of like mediocre sort of not non-emergency emergencies. And they get this over the course of time. What develops is a sort of expeditious attitude of um, get in, get out, you know, almost like an assembly line approach to healthcare, which is frustrating, and annoying. And especially when you got when she's in pain and she wants to stay because she's in such pain and they want to give her pain meds 
And they didn't even do a CT scan. By the way, don't say CAT scan. My sister says, don't say CAT scan. That's not vernacular anymore. CT scan, it, it, CAT scan is like, it's, she's like, it's annoying. It's, it's CT scan. The A, it doesn't belong in there. It, there's no, it's just, it's not a CAT scan. It's a CT scan. Just so you know, it's frowned upon. <laughs> it is now frowned upon. It used to always be CAT scan. Now it's like, see, I guess you're dating yourself there. Just doing that. Um, by saying CAT scan, don't say CAT scan, CT scan. So because she had kidney stones twice in the last two years, she had CT scans for both of those. They didn't want to give her another scan. She was in a lot of pain. They gave her pain meds. They gave her ibuprofen and Oxycontin and sent her home. She didn't want to take the Oxy, which I, I understand. So we kind of had the bottle of Oxy, but um, she wasn't using it. And she kind of felt better. She felt better Sunday night. She felt better Monday. Nothing. Uh, Tuesday, she started feeling a little bad and we'd gone for a walk on Monday and she's like, you know, let's do, let's go for another walk. So we went for another walk on Tuesday and she's just working through the pain a little bit and, you know, the pain subsided a little, but then it came back with a vengeance and it was bad. And that's the call. The call is always, she just gets in this pain and it's like, do I hang around and suffer through the pain and hope the stone passes or do we go back to the hospital? And that's the situation. And eventually we had to go back. Now we decided not to go back to the city hospital. We went to one a little a little bit further, but in the suburbs a little bit more, where we kind of feel like the treatment's a little bit better. And I think it is. The problem is, is that she got in there and then right away they do the CT scan. They're like, oh, well, we got to check this out because now you're back. So we're doing, so they do the CT scan. She's got four kidney stones. One is big and it's on its way out. And that's what's causing her all the pain. And the other three are in the kidney. They're smaller. Uh, and they may not come out for months. So they're in there and they're not, but they're not causing her pain either. They're just kind of chilling. They're, they're probably like next month's problem. Um, and she's in such pain. So they admit her to the hospital and now she's in, you know, she's in the hospital and they said, all right, in the morning, we're going to have to do a minor procedure where they help flush the kidney stone out. Nobody likes minor procedures, right? So she's a little nervous about that. And uh, she took her to the hospital around four o'clock. Around nine o'clock, nine thirty, she passes the stone, the big, the bigger stone. It's like yay, but she's still sore and and it still hurts. She's still in a little bit of pain. And they're still like, oh, you passed the stone. So what? We're still doing the procedure. You got three more stones in there. And I'm like, oh, great. But they had to transfer her back to the city hospital. So they do that. Uh, the urologist comes in the morning, says, oh, you passed the stone. The other three are still in the kidney. We're going to hold off on the minor procedure and see how you do because she's feeling a little bit better by then. They gave her some food because she hadn't eaten in a while because she was supposed to have this procedure so she wasn't allowed to eat. They gave her some food, gave her some you know, liquids and uh, she starts feeling better. And uh, you know, I had stayed with her to about two in the morning Went home for a little nap. I got back, to, you know, she went in the ambulance to the other hospital. I got back at like nine in the morning. I uh, sat with her for about two hours. Then I'm like, all right, look, I got to go home. I got, I had packages to mail for Team Ordinary. And, uh, but we thought that they were going to discharge her soon. So I said, just call me and I'll come get you whenever you're ready. So that was at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. I got to pick a sandwich from school. So I go to get her. We drop the packages off at the post office. I'm like, let's just go swing by. I'll pick up Steph. Go to the hospital. We get there about three, four o'clock, five o'clock. They keep saying they're going to discharge her. Then one lady, then one nurse says, "Ah, oh, you know, we talked to the doctor. They might want to, they might want to watch you overnight." And it kind of felt like they just wanted because they just didn't hadn't gotten to the paperwork of discharging her. You know what I mean? It's like this is the diff. This is the problem with healthcare. The red tape is ridiculous, and it was like we got there on Sunday and we wanted to stay to get it taken care of, but they wanted to send us home. And then we got there on, we were there on Tuesday and Wednesday and we wanted to go home and they wouldn't let us leave. Uh, it's just, and, and to be honest, the people who work there and, and treated her on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, they treat, they, they were awesome. The care that she got there was great. The people really did care. They were responsive. And sometimes I, I, I cause I always feel when people are at work, they're disgruntled. That's like our culture. We're a country of disgruntled people. No one likes their job. And it actually felt like these people uh, that were working there, I asked them questions. I hate, oh, can we have a cup? She has a pitcher of water. She needed a cup. Can we have a cup? Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. Like how many times would you ask people a stupid nonsense question like that? And they'd be like, ugh. 
I'll get you one later and then maybe they show up an hour with a cup or maybe they show up a half hour later without a cup and they, oh, sorry, I forgot. And then they, I mean, waitress, they have, right? I mean, just this stuff happens all the time. All But these people actually did care. The problem was just the red tape of getting her done and getting her out and getting her discharged. And Sam and I walking through the hospital for three hours, we've learned the entire layout of that hospital. Uh, spending a lot of time in the cafeteria, I might add, perhaps with Oreo pudding. I got to tell you, the, the cafeteria at this hospital is top notch. I mean, I would like take a date there for dinner. Where are we going? We're going to a hospital cafeteria. <laughs> Having a great, great. Um, by the way, I'm not dating anyone. I'm married happily. It's just a joke, guys. It's just a joke. But um, they do have actually really good food at the hospital cafeteria. Uh, especially, I recommend the Oreo pudding if you're staying there. Um, but yeah, so that was like a setback for the week. And now it's about trying to kind of get her a few more runs before Marine Corps Marathon. She didn't get her, her she got a 16 mile, which was good. But she didn't. She wanted to do a little bit longer. She wanted to be in better shape, ready to go. And uh, and now we're just trying to get her back into running shape. And, I, and the funny thing is, I thought here maybe I'm sitting in the bullpen because I st- I'm still registered for the race and I could still run it if need be. Uh, I don't even want to take my sneakers with me because that might tempt me to do it if she backs out at the last minute. But uh, we're doing a shakeout run that I'm going to be part of on on uh, Saturday. So I do have. I will have my running stuff there. I will be picking up my race packet because I paid for it. Uh, I'm just not running the race. I just my fear now is that I'm in the bullpen, and that if Stephanie isn't feeling 100 percent come race day, uh, it might be me going out there to race. <laughs> that will be a nightmare, a wonderful nightmare. If I finish Marine Corps Marathon by accident, uh, that'll be a story for you guys. Anyway, like I said, we're going out to San Diego tomorrow. We'll be there till Wednesday. There's a chance you might not see me again until Thursday. That means I will bring the GoPro. It is here. I am one for my last one. Uh, on road trips, getting a podcast out to you guys. So hopefully if I get two, that was is what's known as a streak, a road streak. And then all of a sudden I got road game for the podcast. I would love that. I would love that. So maybe you'll see me on Monday with another podcast. Good luck to all you guys racing. Uh, and remember, every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys.